Anti-gravity batteries offers the lightest, most powerful, and technologically advanced lithium-ion motorsports and power sports batteries available. Save 70% in weight over lead-acid batteries while gaining better starting and handling performance. From daily drivers to world-class racing, we offer a number of choices to best fit your specific needs. Batteries for motorcycle power sports or automotive applications are first ever, that's right, first ever built-in jump starting, or choose from our ultra-compact batteries for race use or custom builds. Check us out at antigravitybatteries.com. How's it going, everybody? Welcome into RacerXOnline.com. I'm Chris Kiefer, and we are in Buchanan, Michigan. Red Bud! Can you say it? Man, you can't even tell how happy I'm in, I am right now. I am away from California. We're out here at the 2023 KTM SX and XC intro. Lots of new stuff here. So we're going to have lots of orange videos coming to you right here, right now. So this one specifically is the 2023 KTM 450 SXF. If you watched our factory edition videos, pretty much copy pasted it to here with a different color frame, some white plastic, but all the same innovations that came with the factory edition is now with the 450 SXF. But we are here on soft East Coast conditions. Proper test here today. So we're gonna ride this thing all day. We have all day at Red Bud, which makes me extremely happy. And uh, we're gonna give you some settings, how this thing works in soft conditions, as well as we'll go back in time and talk to you about how it worked on hard pack in California. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. We're gonna get you some more information here shortly. Long day here at Red Bud, 2023 KTM intro, two strokes, four strokes. I'm tired. My voice is gone. Uh, we started at 9 a.m. It is past 5 p.m. now, and we've been riding basically all day. I think I took two breaks, but I'm not complaining. You want to know why? I'm here at Red Bud. The dirt's amazing. I had a lot of fun bikes to ride. The guy behind the, ca behind the camera, Spencer, walking up and down the hills all day. It's a grind sometimes, folks. I know it's not a real job. It's not a real job. This is fun. I'm tired, but it was, it was a blast. I got raw monkey butt right now, but I'm not complaining. All right, last bike of the day we're going to talk about. KTM 450 SXF 2023 edition. Just like the 250, I said, you can copy and paste the factory edition into this thing right here. No changes to this bike except, obviously, the clamps are not factory edition clamps. They got different rims. Not as stiff, the hubs are different, as well as white plastic, a black frame. Come on, KTM. We can't get an orange frame every year. It just looks so much better. I love it. Transparency. I'm not a huge fan of white plastic. I would love to have more orange. It's a KTM. We call it Orange Brigade. Let's make the rear fender orange at least. I do like the white side panels, but prefer the orange rear fender if I'm nitpicking. All right, so I've been riding the KTM 450 SXF Factory Edition at home a lot. I think I have almost 40 hours on mine, believe it or not, and I've had it maybe two months. One of my favorite bikes to ride right now. In stock form, I do feel like, now that I have a lot of time on it, and now that I've ridden this here at Red Belt at a different track versus at home at Glen Helen and all the same stuff we always ride, there's a lot of power with this bike. Versus the 2022 machine, it was linear and long and it was easier to ride. This thing has almost too much. Sometimes it's almost too touchy when you roll in corners. <clears throat> I don't feel that as much here in the soft dirt. I kind of like that touchiness because it's so soft. But as I got uh, later in the day, track hardened up, uh, the ruts hardened up, and it got bumpy, I wanted it to be a little bit smoother. And I do feel like even in map one, it is a little bit too touchy in second gear. I want to run third gear, but it just doesn't have quite enough to get me in and out of the corner the way I want to uh, in third gear in map one or map two. 
Map two, you're gonna get a lot of hits. So if you're a bigger dude and you want a lot of front side, a lot of low end, map two is very good, especially back east, man. There's so many different uh, feelings that I have when I rode here today versus when I ride back at home. So you guys out there saying we should test more back east, you're right. KTM, thank you for actually bringing us to a track that has traction uh, that I can feel things with. It's very good for engine testing. I love it. The track is off camber, so it's challenging. It works the chassis on the edges of my tires. I appreciate that because this is where this bike lacked last year is every time I'm on the edges of my tires, the chassis was a little bit wallowy, a little bit busy. Not on this 2023. It's more stable. It's a little bit stiffer feeling on straight line bump absorption, but you can actually ride it faster in softer conditions. When you go out for your practice at your local track and it's deep, ripped up deep, sometimes the KTM is, it moves a lot, right? Pitching. This doesn't have it as much in 2023. The, the chassis is a little bit more flatter. I feel like acceleration, the, ba the back of the bike, or I call it the ass of the bike, isn't as low. Uh, it's up a little bit more, so I get more traction. The balance of the bike as a whole is much better in 23 versus the 22. This is why I like the factory edition so much, because granted, it may be a little bit heavier in corners at times. It's way better getting into the corner because it's more stable. So I can appreciate that, especially here at Red Bud, because as you're coming down these hills, you got some bumps, and the, the rear of the bike wants to push the front of the bike uh, really hard putting all that weight coming down the hill. You're grabbing the front brake, you're pushing the, the rear end up. This bike stays a little bit flatter, more calm. I like that. It's still very playful. I like that as well. If you guys are coming off from a Japanese bike, Japanese bike versus an Austrian bike like the KTM, I'm able to hop bumps better on this bike than I could on Japanese bikes that I tested. So I get here at Red Bud coming down the hills, I can go, yeah, and hop over little um, braking bumps, two to three braking bumps, land in the corner. This chassis does it a lot better than last year's chassis because it's stiffer. So it allows me to open up my riding a little bit more. I love that. I can slam into things or I can be more finesseful. Or if I want to be lazy, second gear is your friend, boys. You're a vet guy, leave this thing in second gear because as the engine pulls, it'll keep pulling. It's very, it pulls very far. So second gear, Maybe a little bit touchy, but actually you can use that gear out in the straightaway a little bit more. Third gear, I would try to maybe change the gearing. If you want to run third gear a little bit more, I would try to do that. And uh, we'll, we're going to do some more gearing specs over on keyforinktesting.com. But right now, I do feel like once this thing breaks in, and that's something to be noted too, six hours or so you're going to need. It's going to have a lot of uh, engine braking. It's going to feel heavy off throttle. Here in soft dirt, you really notice that. So when you get off throttle, you have deep dirt, it really wants to try to throw your front end forward because the engine braking. As the bike broke in today more, it got way better. So just know if you got a new one coming, it'll take about six hours to break in. But overall, man, cornering is a little bit slower in area two. Straight line stability is better. Power is more. Better for some. Maybe I would like just a slight less RPM response, which is drastically different from last year's bike. I wanted more, 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 but now I want a little bit less. So KTM did provide us with more horsepower. And from what I heard too, the race team guys even want a little bit less. Their bikes were a little bit too fast. So they calmed those down as well. So in production form, man, this thing is fast. So if you're a bigger guy, I think you're gonna appreciate it. If you're a smaller guy, you might want a little bit uh, of a different gearing change and ride a little bit lower in the RPM. Fork. 11.1 bar, bring that up. I'm 175 pounds, 105 with a sag. I did go an eighth, uh, I'll say two to two clicks on high speed, and then I opened up the rebound one just to kind of follow some chop around here at Red Bud, and that was nice. 11 bar on the fork, and I went out on the compression two, backed that off a little bit, and it has a lot of compliancy. Uh, if Spencer got me coming through the sand rollers here, you can kind of see I'm light on the pegs and floating that front end. And as I get to the corner, um, I felt like I was too low at times with the stock air pressure. So that's why I went up and it really helped diving into the corners. But very nice bike to ride. I do think it vibrates a little bit for me, a little bit uh, too much. 
but as you ride KTMs, you don't really notice it. You only notice the vibration when you go onto a Japanese bike versus a KTM. So that is a little bit different, but I didn't even notice it today because I rode all KTMs and I just got used to it. So not a big issue. I would put some pro taper bars in this thing and the vibration does go down. So that does help. So maybe look into that. Otherwise, man, I love the foot pegs. They're a wide platform. Uh, I can grip the bike very well. The layout of the bike ergonomically is awesome. Um, for me, it's one of the best, besides the Honda, it has some of the best ergonomics out there right now. And it's easy to ride. That's what makes it so fun for me to ride. So when I go to these tracks, I want to ride fast. It makes me want to ride fast because it invites me to because the chassis and the engine work so well together. So that is fun. Had a great time here, man. As you guys see, I'm still jacked up. I could talk 15 minutes, but we can make a 30 minute video about this bike and talk about the track, but I'm gonna calm down. I'm gonna go eat, I'm gonna relax. Spencer's hungry behind the camera. Look for more videos here on racerxonline.com. Thank you, KTM. Thank you, Richie family for having us out here. It's really a treat, man. I, every time I get older, uh, I try not to take these things for granted. And it's, uh, how many guys can say they went to Red Bud, had a private day, rode six bikes? It's insane. I rode six bikes, had a great track to ride on, bunch of great people here at the facility. So uh, really fun day for me. Very thankful. If you have any questions, the track, bike, Chris at KieferInkTesting.com. I work hard to leave my door open for you guys out there if you guys need help. As always, RacerX Online has everything you need here. 12 issues if you guys are older and want to read some stuff instead of go online all the time. 30 bucks, you get a free sunshade for your car. You're coming out here, parking in Lot B, getting ready for the designations, put the Racer X shade up. It's because you subscribe for 12 issues. That's money. Uh, we'll see you guys back in California. Enter sad face here. We'll see you back in California for more tests right here on racerxonline.com. See you guys later. Red Bud!